Hello, and welcome to another Bojinian vlog. Alright, how are you guys doing? Uh, I'm still in my car, it's still dark, impromptu light source. Let's get it, let's go. <laughs> so, in today's entry, I wanted to break off from what I was talking about last week and the previous weeks. Because I've been talking about very practical things, you know, how to uh, how to be motivated, how to find balance in your life, you know, how to accept kind of all of the different things that happen to you, you know, and find a way to own it and, and realize that all of these different things, they are that you might think that they're headaches because there's so much vari variation in life and so many things you have to deal with. But like, you can think of it also in terms of like, life is so varied and abundant right and you can use that to kind of fuel your own creativity and realize that you're not just one person with a singular identity per se you're actually you can actually you start to find your curiosity like i said when you when you first own yourself so you realize that things that you love are beautiful and you can you can bring them to the forefront of your life and the forefront of your identity but then you start to realize that the more that you explore from that space of safety and security in knowing yourself and your identity, you start to discover all these things that like, ah, I can try this and I can try that, you know? So it, it's like this slow kind of like inching towards the feeling of security. And it starts from you understanding who you are and owning that, right? So that's what I was talking about. But in this entry, I wanted to do something completely different and do something that I haven't done for a while and I'm hoping I do a good job but like this entry is going to be a lot more spiritual a lot more um a lot yeah a lot more kind of a lot less a lot less practical right you know it's going to be in the vein of en such entries as spirituality versus science that I did in the past, right? Because like in the past few weeks, I've had like this, this I, I randomly had this massive download, right? And like, it happens, right? When you're like a sensitive spiritual person, it kind of happens that you have like, sometimes you just, you're just like unsuspecting and you suddenly have this massive realization, right? And again, it's, it's not really something that has a practical application. But it's just something that I thought about and I thought I would share share with you guys. So like if if you want to have your mind blown, potentially, <laughs> or just be frustrated because I'm just like kind of rambling on about some random like shit that doesn't apply to anything in life, then like I hope you will enjoy this entry, right? I'll try my best. It's been a while since the actual download and like it's it's a high vibrational download. So like again, it, it's not really attached to anything physical per se. But yeah, but it's very abstract and very like kind of like high dimensional, high vibrational kind of a thought. So I'm hoping that I can take, kind of take that. I made a few notes. So if I struggle, then I can go, go, I can kind of look at them, but like, so what is that that I want to talk about? Well, it's in the title. It is the infinite and the infinitesimal, right? Two infinities that we um that that we encounter in mathematics you know in science right but you know in layman's terms how big can you go how far can you count before you hit some you hit the end you know, or, you know, yes, you know, and it's like, how big can you go? Right. And in theory, you can go, there's no end to how big things can get. Right. Because we don't know what lies outside of our universe. We only know what is, you know, in more or less, right? It's, it's very, you know... <laughs> Like, science is great and all, right? But, like, I really wonder, like, to what accuracy they can truly chart the entirety of our observable universe, right? You know, so... But, you know, to their credit, right, you know, they they, they have more or less... Um, you know, they, they know roughly how big the universe is, or the observable universe, right? 
um, or at least they can estimate relatively well, right? And then conversely, how small can you go, right? Because you can cut a cake in half, you can cut it into quarters, you can cut it into eighths, you can cut it into hundreds, a thousandth, a, you know, a millionth. You know, you can keep dividing things and subtracting things until you get to, you know, molecules, atoms, subatomic particles, you know, quarks, right? But then, like, what can, can what, what exists? You know, what makes up quarks? And this is where shit goes crazy, right? Because you have in, you know, just using science as an example, or I say example, it's like the biggest example of them all, right? Is what we can see, you know, um, you know, the big, what's the biggest thing in the universe? Arguably, it's, it's like a black hole, right? And like, when you start to think about just what goes on with a black hole, like, it's like everything that we know about physics, you know, in, in like, um, a traditional sense breaks the fuck down because like, you know, gravity tends to infinity, you know, density, gra like, um, density is what causes uh, gravity and that tends to infinity and it's like light can't escape it light warps around it you know in a thing called gravitational lensing all oh, right you know and like it's just like what the fuck is this thing right what the fuck is this thing time changes you know like you know you slow down or something or time slows down you know it's like what the fuck is happening right relativity you know it's like what the fuck is happening, right? And then you go to subatomic particles, right? And you start to be able to, like, not observe them in a proper way, right? So there's something called the, uh, the uncertainty principle. Um, and the uncertainty principle basically says that, like, you, when you get to, like, subatomic particles, you know, and, and particles of that size, then you can only measure one of two properties, one being the position of it, and the second being the momentum of it. Right? So, like, if you measure one, then the other becomes uncertain. You know, you can't, you can no longer uh, measure it accurately. And so, like, there's also a thing called wave-particle duality. So, like, at that level, then, like, particles, or what we would traditionally view as particles, you know, start to behave like waves you know, which can't, you know, so, like, you, you start to be able to measure them on some kind of a, con like, a, a continuous scale, so, like, you know, um, temperature, for example, or things of that nature. I'm no scientist, well, I, I used to be a scientist, so, like, take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt, obviously, I could be saying some wrong things, but, like, if I do, then I will try and correct myself in the description, but, like, um, yeah, and, and then, like, waves start to like kind of exhibit like particle you know tendencies you know and it's like what the hell what the hell you know and it's like so you have these two extremes and when you think about it in a linear way which is what most of us tend to think in terms of like you go from zero and you add one and you add another one and you add all the way to infinity so that's already one infinity, right? And then you go from one and you divide by two, you get 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, 0 0.0625. That's probably wrong. <laughs> Maybe it's right, actually. Maybe my memory, like, we'll see. You know, we'll see if I'm, I'm an idiot or not, like, when this entry comes out. But, like, um, yeah, and, like, you go all the way to infinitesimal, right? And it's, like, Take those two already fucking absurd things and put them together. So you, you, you not only have one infinity, you have one infinity. You have to traverse one infinity just to get from infinitesimally small to one. Then you have to traverse another um, infinity, which is one to infinity, right? And then there's all this shit about, like, maybe there's multiple levels of infinities, you know, there's, like... There's, you know, standard ones where you count them, and then there's ones that are logarithmic, and it's like, what the fuck? Right, and it's like, obviously, I say obviously, it's not really obvious. It's not even, this is just my perspective, right? Is that like, perhaps 
we cannot uh, treat these things as we would treat co like concrete things, discrete things. We can't treat infinity in the same way that we treat one or two or a tennis ball or a planet, right? We have to treat them with something that, that is beyond linearity or uh, in terms of like a scale, a scalic type of way of thinking, right? So let me just look at my notes here so that I can kind of comment. Sorry, my light, it's, it's also my light source, it's my phone. So unfortunately I'm in the talk, but like I've written a, a heap of notes here just to keep me on track. Again, no, just a dis as a disclaimer, no kind of real, um, no kind of real point to this entry practically. It's just, just kind of thoughts I had from this download I had, right? So, yeah, okay. So also, yeah, so I'll, I'll go into the, others, the, the, the other component of this, which is right brain dominance and left brain dominance, right? Because this ties into this also, right? I guess if you wanted a practical application of this, then this would be it, is like the way that we perceive things, right? But, um, yeah, so nothing and infinity, basically. I say nothing, infinitesimal, you know. Zero is, is more, is an idea. Isn't that shocking? Zero is not really like a, a concrete thing if you think about it, you know. A phone is a concrete thing, right? A person is a concrete thing. An atom is a concrete thing. But zero? What is zero? You know, zero is an idea, right? So, you, so zero is basically the same as infinitesimal. It, it's an idea. In the same way that infinity is an idea. Can you show what an infinity is? No, it's an idea, right? So... And like, for those of you who are intuitive, right, because obviously this is an intuitive um, kind of, it's something that I stumbled on intuitively, like, you know, I'm not really a scientist, to be honest, right, I, I, I kind of basically feel like these things just drop into my consciousness, right. But you get to a point where you consider that perhaps nothingness or infinitesimal or infinitesimality. I don't know if that's even a rule word, but like, it's better than saying infinitesimal. What's the noun form of that? But like, um, you know, like, perhaps zero or nothingness or infinitesimal, or infinitesimality. <laughs> I'm just saying infinitesimal because I know that's a real word. Um, and infinity or everything. Everything and nothing. Perhaps they're the same thing. You know. Perhaps the universe is everywhere and nowhere, right? And like this is where I kind of struggle because like I kind of can't really with you know with verbal language kind of or I haven't you know, perhaps I should have waited a bit and kind of fleshed this out before I, I did this entry, but like, I've written some notes down here. One is adding, one is dividing. Okay, that, that's related to the brain stuff. They're yeah, one and the same. Okay, so, um, yeah, it, it's, again, it, it's, it's an intuitive feeling that nothing and everything is actually the same thing, right? Because what do we think of in terms of spiritual truth, or, or rather the, the way that the, the, re, the reality is structured right so like we tend to talk about this reality as a multi-dimensional construct right you may have heard that from such teachers as teal swan or people like that 
and what do we have at the very tip top if you will you know um you know looking at things that way of of this construct we have source consciousness or source or source energy right or the unifying field as einstein coined it um it is the it is the the level of reality where nothing is distinct nothing is separate and so it is nothing and everything at the same time because there's no point of comparison or point of reference that would that would create a situation where you can tell if something was something or something was not something if you see what i mean on that level things such as this is this and this is isn't this isn't this you can't think like that anymore you know because it, it's all uniform right so the question is like i say is it everything or is it nothing because you can think of it in both ways i guess in the same way that you can that, you know the whole the, the saying of like um you know is the glass half empty or half full you know it, it like it depends on your perspective right you can see it from both perspectives right because because that source level of reality or the unifying field it has everything it encompasses everything right because everything is part of that field everything comes from that field so you could say that the unifying field or source is everything right but at the same time, on that level, there is nothing. Nothing happens, right? We we sprung forth. We sprang forth. Getting my my tenses right from that from that level of cohesion, I guess you could say, right? You know, and you could argue that as we continue to fractal into what we are now, you know, physical beings in this reality this holographic or this hologram of contrast and duality you know you could argue that we are more than that because we split from that thing or rather we we uh we were born from that place of nothingness right so you can see it either way is what i'm trying to say i can rhyme for days <laughs> um Okay, let's see what we have here. Again, like, very just disjointed because this is very high vibrational stuff. It's, it's like it's very abstract, in other words. Um, yeah, so, what happens when you take away from everything? Do you get everything minus one? Do you get infinity minus one? Because in theory, that's what you get, right? If you subtract one from infinity... Lot, like at least like common sense would tell you that you get infinity minus one but what will mathematicians tell you you can't subtract from infinity you can't add to infinity either right what about nothingness if you add one to nothing yeah you know a lot of people will be like, oh yeah you get one you get one uh, you, get, you have nothing and you get one <laughs> Or is it that you add two halves to get one? Is it that you get naught that you get 0 0.1 plus 0 0.9 is one? Is it that you get 0 0.0001 to 0 0.0009 0 .0 and then you get one? Right? No, you get 0. Point, you, forget what I said. No, 0 0.9999999 1 2 3 4 5 and 0 0.0001. Then you get one. Right? Because can you really add to nothing? Okay, let me let me let me rephrase this. Can you divide? Um, can you divide nothing mathematically? Can you multiply nothing mathematically? No, you can't. Like mathematically speaking, you can add one to nothing and you get one, right? But like, where like what? Where are the constituent parts? If you think about it. Right, one plus zero, or any number plus zero, gives its it gets its original value. So two plus zero is two, fourteen plus zero is fourteen, 
2,969 plus 0 is 2,969, right? So you get the same value. You add nothing to it. You add nothing to it, right? So where is this other thing that you're adding to the, to the number? Where is it? You might as well not even bother with the plus 0. Why? What's the point? 1 plus 1 is 0. You don't need the plus 1 equals. 1 is 1. So, like, can we actually add to nothing? Math says that we can, you know, or, or like, in, in, at least in that, in that kind of, uh, in that language of mathematics, right? But think about it. Can you actually add anything to one? It's, it's nothing, like I said, it's nothing actually a thing. Or is nothing actually the same as infinity, right? And, and can you, and so, like, can you multiply by zero? No, because you get zero, right? Or, or rather, you can in mathematical terms, right? But, like, you get zero. But, like, in terms of, like, like, is it, is it, like, a productive function? No. It, it, it gives, like, a, a null result, right? And you can't divide by zero. If anything, you divide by zero, you get, like, in my, in my eyes, you get infinity, right? But, like, you know, mathematicians aren't, they're, they're not, they, they're not, they haven't reached a consensus of what happens when you divide by zero, right? So, okay, so we have two things. We have infinity, and we have nothing, right? Both, you cannot add, or multiply, or divide, or subtract from, right? So maybe they're the same thing. Maybe they're the same thing. Maybe it's the infinite, maybe when you subtract from infinity, you get nothing. Or, or rather, when you subtract from infinity, it stays infinity because you because infinity is indivisible. You cannot subtract, you cannot take away from infinity, right? And nothingness, infinitesimal, right? Maybe you can't like you can't add to it, right? Because where are the parts that you add to? Think about it. Like I know, I know it's like you know, and I'm trying to explain this the best I can without sounding like an idiot, right? But like, you, yes, you can do one plus zero equals one, and you can do, you know, and you could even do like, you know, minus one point one plus zero equals minus one point one. Like you can, you can write that out as a mathematical expression, but, like, think about it, you know, can you actually add anything to zero? Because there's nothing in zero to add to. You need to add something to something, you know? If you, like, again, you could think I'm an absolute idiot, but, like, that's because you're thinking in, like, a, tr a traditional you know, like, scientific and mathematical, mathematical primarily way. It's like, yeah, you know, what are you talking about? You can add one to plus, you can add anything to zero, you fucking idiot. Just, again, like, I don't, I don't know if this will hit, but, like, this is my explanation of it, is, like, nothingness, like, if you think of infinity as a cloud, this cloud, you know, you cannot add, you cannot subtract from. And so, like, this cloud, no matter how many chunks of it you take out, right, it stays the same shape, it stays the same volume, infinitely big, right? That's why, is you can keep taking, you can take, you can take one away from infinity for the rest of eternity, and it will never, like, diminish in size. That's infinity. Simult sim uh, simultaneously, with nothing, you can add one to nothing forever. This makes sense to you, right? You can do zero plus one to the infinity. So basically you add an infinite number of ones to zero, to nothingness, and you'll still... Wait, let me think of this. <laughs> I think I might be wrong. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, you can add... Yeah, like, yeah, this is where it's tricky. Because, yeah, again, like, the maths implies that you can add one to nothing. You know, that's just how things are set up, right? Because zero is treated as, 
um, a cardinal number. But like I'm talking about the idea of nothingness, right? Nothingness means that you can keep adding to it and it will remain nothing. You know, let, let, let's, let's, let's say infinitesimal. Let's say infinitesimal, right? If you add one, you can add one to something that's infinitesimally small. I think that's probably a better way of explaining it. It's because I kind of, I kind of, kind of, you know, I linked zero with infinitesimal. And like, I guess you could argue that strictly they're not the same thing, but okay. So if, let's say that you add one to the infinity. Um, so basically, you know, to, to, to um, infinitesimally small. Again, like, you could argue many things. You could say that that equals zero, you know, but what does that mean? You know, and, and like, this, this is where shit gets insane for like mathematicians and scientists, right? So I'm not going to go down that train necessarily, right? But let's just say, f like, f for argument's sake, that you can keep adding one to nothing and you will never get anything because there is nothing within nothing. There is nothing within nothing that will ever amount to something. If you see what I mean, right? So you have everything that you cannot take away from, and you have nothing that you cannot add something to, right? But simultaneously, you could argue that because infinity is infinitely large, there is nothing you can add to infinity to make it any bigger, right? And you could also argue that infinitesimally small is, has nothing in it, so there's nothing to take away from it either. You can take, you, can, you cannot take away I, I was about to say you can take away forever, but you can't take anything away from it because it's nothing, right? I'm talking about the idea of nothing, not the mathematical definition of infinitesimally small, whatever. Like, again, I'm no scientist, right? Just, just, you know, follow me here. So, if that's the case, perhaps nothing and everything are the same thing, right? Uh... I think this is where I may start to get into to brain stuff. Um, yeah, because I don't want to make this too long, you know, because it's kind of a thing, but... Yeah. Addition is the smallest addition, division is the largest subtraction I wrote down. So I just chime that in. I, yeah, basically, like... It's just, yeah, this, this, this will make sense when I start to relate this to our brain functions, but like humans are logical in some ways and emotional, okay, that's, that's unrelated. Yeah, I think, I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> Wait for, oh uh, yeah, okay, so th there's a bit more to it, but like, let me, okay, so let me tie this, that's, that's just my opinion, that's just an idea. Call it fringe science, if you will. Call it some idiot just blathering on about weird pseudoscience that he doesn't really know what the fuck he's talking about. Whatever, you know. <laughs> but, like, it's just a thought I had, you know. I, I was just think like, the way, the way that I pictured it, because it came as a picture to me, because obviously, like, it's, it's something that's very abstract. It has nothing to do with, with things, right? It's, it's just, I was like, I pictured, like, a, um, I pictured, like, yeah, I literally pictured a blob, and that blob, like, you take away from, and, like, it just keeps filling back in. So you, you, you pick a hole out of it, and it fills back in. You pick a hole out, and it fills back in, right? Um, and I imagined, like... Um, yeah, just, 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 just this field. Imagine, like, this mass, this cloud, this goo, right? And it just, it, it doesn't matter what you do to it, it's always there, right? And isn't, and isn't it the case that we spiritual people always say that the universe is infinitely abundant? That energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred from one form to another? And what is dark energy? Right, I'm going to talk about it in a second, but like, uh, or maybe I'll talk about that now, actually, dark energy, right? Because, um... Well, I, I said, okay, I said that the largest object in our observable, or, or in, in our observable universe is the black hole. But is that actually the case? There's something called dark matter, right? And 
and you know synonymously well not synonymously but like but related is dark energy right so this is basically the shit that exists in between the shit that we see and observe in our observable universe that we cannot fucking like we don't know what the fuck it is because between here and venus or not venus yeah venus mercury venus yeah mercury venus right mercury's the first planet i'm tripping it <laughs> yeah mercury venus mars earth mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune and then Pluto. Pluto's no longer a planet. I miss Pluto being not not being. A, I miss Pluto being a planet. <laughs> that sucks. Is why why is it not a planet anyway? Um, <laughs> so what what exists between here and let's say Mars or Mars and Jupiter, right? There's a few asteroids, and I say a few is probably like billions or trillions or something. I, I'm not sure, but like there's there's another there's like gas and and like dust and shit, right? But what about all of the shit that ties all, that, that's in between all of that stuff? It's all darkness, right? It's like, it, it's like light years, literally, right? Like, because it, it's like, it's like, no, no, it's not, it's not, it's not like that. Sorry, I'm being an idiot, right? Light years is like intergalactic pretty much, right? But like, um, it's, it's like at least, it's like hundreds of thousands of kilometers, right? If not millions. Again, I'm no, I'm no astronomer, so <laughs> take what I say with a pinch of, and realize that I'm an idiot just spouting nonsense. Or like, you know, or, right, okay, I wouldn't say that, but like, I'm, I'm tackling this from like a more kind of intuitive frame of mind as opposed to a scientific one, right? So not observational, not factual, but like based on how I feel and just patterns I observe, right? Being right brain dominant myself. So I'll talk about it in a second, but like, yeah, all of that shit is, 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 is darkness and we have no and like it seems to interact with the rest of space in a way you know like obviously because it kind of ties it all together but we don't know scientists don't know what the fuck it is what makes it up how we could even begin to detect it and like i think it was like is it it constitutes like 60 percent or something of you know of the observable universe maybe more i'm not i can't again i'm not sure of that but like yeah, maybe that's the fucking biggest thing, right? And like, what is what is darkness? I guess maybe it's the same thing as stuff in a black hole. Who knows, right? Anyway, I don't know, <laughs> but like, it's like you don't know. How can you detect it? You know, how do you know? Maybe it's the maybe it's the stuff that that like it, everything goes back to. Like maybe like when the universe. You know, event like maybe if there is a big crunch or a big rip, or I've got the, the other name for it. There's like heat death, but like that's not one I like. <laughs> um, big crunch, big bounce. I think yeah, big bounce. You know, if if there was if if the, the universe does then contract like a, if you think of it, if the universe is like a, or the universe is being born from like a plucked string, like a guitar string. Then, like, eventually that string needs to kind of, like, stop expanding and then, like, kind of rest, return to rest, right? So, like, what happens after that? Is it just darkness again, you know? So, anyway, enough, <laughs> enough fringe science. Let's talk about this right brain to left brain thing, right? So, left brain, right brain is a very kind of broad way of, of kind of differentiating between people who are more... Um, who are more kind of, how do I describe it? I guess logical, in the sense that like, you know, there are people who, who, who work with units. They work with points. So this is referencing Alan Watts, right? The way that he describes this is people like there's, there's the, the prickles and, and the goo, right? <laughs> That's how you, like there's, there's points, right? And scientists and people who are, who are predominantly left-brained, um, they, they focus on points. So they focus on one thing, they add it to another thing, and eventually they construct a whole other thing, then they add that to another thing, right? So they, they go from what is preliminary in terms of empirical, right? So they, they make an observation, and they take that data point, and they, extra they, they measure again, and they extrapolate it, you know, that, that's, it's, that's a scientific method. It's all left brain 
left brain process, right? Basically, it, it's like it's, it's like kind of building a picture from a unit. You know, it's simulating things. You know, all of our technology is born from this left brain kind of uh, process because, like, you know, we built things, we made observations, then we slowly built things together. You know, um, yeah, even like you know, digital media, digital images, you know, digital movies. Um, digital whatever, right? <laughs> digital music, audio, right? It's all a, it's all a kind of sampling process, or, or and an extrapolating, uh, extrapolation process, right? You know, when you kind of read delve deep into like the science behind these things, you know, like digital audio and stuff like that, you realize that like a lot of it's like kind of like, yeah, you you, you kind of you sample it, then you like, um. You play, you know, you sample it, and there's a there's there's a quality to that, there's a rate to that, you know, and then there's there's things there's things that fill in the silence, there's approximations, you know, when you move when you go from thirty frames per second like a moving image to sixty frames per second, for example, then like you can either record at sixty frames per second, you know, um, or have or rather have a movie that's sixty frames per second, or you can smooth out the frames and make like like these tweens as they call them. Uh, these tween frames that basically make that the kind of emulate a sixty frame per second video from thirty frame per second source material, right? So, yeah, the, the left the left brain is 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 concerned with like uh, induction. I don't know if that's the right word. Like, I have to be careful with the words I use here. But like, um, it it yeah, it's 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 to do with points. It's to do with um, Kind of taking things and putting them together. <laughs> Bojin in 2017. It's like taking points and putting them together. Yay! Uh, <laughs> and then there's right brain dominance, right? And this is, I'm I'm right brain dominant, right? So like I see everything in in big pictures, right? I see patterns very easily, um, you know. And they say that the human mind is very good at recognizing patterns, right? And this is true of everyone, right? So, so everyone to some degree has, a, you know, has right-brained kind of, pro, like, you know, thoughts. Like, in terms of, like, they use their right brain to think, right? Um, and, like, to a left-brain dominant person, like, a.k.a. a scientist or a psychologist or someone, you know, a scientist, right? The right-brained kind of, um, the right-brained process is very baffling, you know, it it it's it's very 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 like mysterious because it's like, what the fuck, like you know like how are you able to like quickly discern between patterns and to see them, you know so readily, right? In such a, in a sea of information, how do you pick out these patterns? The brain surely is an amazing thing, right? What these left brain thinkers do not understand. Is that the right brain, or you know, what is what we label as the right brain, is our ability to divide things from the whole. Right. So the, the way that the left brain interprets the right brain process is that like you're taking these things and you're adding them together. So it's it's, it's tackling it from a very again bottom up approach where it's like you start with a point, then you then you you, you combine points, and it's very additive. The left brain process is very additive, right? And then you have the, the right brain, right, which basically takes everything. This is why the right, right brain is, is like, uh, usually people talk, like, talk about, like, you know, it, it's more kind of felt perception based, you know, as opposed to thinking perception based, right? It's because you feel, or rather you recognize the way that, the, that everything has been cut to form the pattern, right? And simple pattern or, or, or rather patterns versus details right patterns are easier to cut out from everything than than details are because from the right brained way of thinking of things which is top down so left brain is is bottom up or, or down top and right brain is top bottom right you can you can think of it in that in those terms the right brain starts from the bigger picture of everything right and it sees, so the right brain sees a, an indentation. Whereas the right, if, if you will, or the, or, and the left brain sees uh, 
sees a a pebble. That was a terrible analogy, like a terrible kind of example. But like, I hope you fo- I hope you follow me here. Like, the right brain does not do what the left brain does. The left brain starts from elementary particles and it builds up to something. So, to from its perspective, the right brain. It's like a genius because it's like it builds all of these fucking patterns and recognizes them so quickly, right? But it doesn't realize that like what it does, right? The left, what the left brain does, is is completely fucking again. Do you relate with this? Like if you're a right brain dominant person, scattered brain, big picture thinker, like more more of a feeler, and you see all these people like doing all these complex like details oriented like kind of like all of this academic stuff you're like what the fuck how like how do i remember all of this stuff that you know there's neutrinos and then there's fucking like bosons and, and like mesons and, and muons and and and, 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 uh, and you know fucking gravitons which don't actually exist you know or haven't been proven to exist you know and, and like fucking there's like transition metals and and like and like uh like DNA, you know, and like, you know, like, ah, like, what the fuck, right? And it's like, the right brain takes, like, it, 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 it sees, it, it's, it sees division. So whereas the left brain um, is an additive, like, it, it, it employs addition. The left, the right brain employs division. That's why visions come so easily to it, right? Because in order to get a, like a something that's very detailed, you have to cut the hole many times. You have to divide it many times to get it to that specific, like intricate kind of detail. You know, in in that thing, right? You know, and so when it's something that's super detailed, a bottom-up approach is obviously the more efficient one, or the one that the kind of like a, the kind of um, lends to it more easily because it's like, hey, this is one thing, you know, this is one atom, you know, this is one unit, right? And it has these constituents in it, right? The cell has a fucking uh, nu- nucleus um, and it has like mitochondria and it has like a cell membrane and it has like some other parts in it, you know, um, you know, and it's like, it's like you build, you, you build something from de- from a unit. Right. But that's not how the right brain works. The right brain takes everything and like the more pervasive a pattern it, or like it, it sees patterns easier than it sees details because patterns are a, are a smaller division of the whole than, a, than like a small detail is or like a really intricate like pattern. Right. Do you see what I, do you see what I'm trying to say here? Right. And like I said said earlier, right? Perhaps everything and nothing are the same thing, right? Because how do you know that the pattern that you're observing is not actually one point in a bigger system? How do you know that the port that the unit that you are adding to another unit is not a universe unto itself, right? And perhaps the left brain and the right brain and the way that we can interpret the universe in these different ways, the way that we can approach everything and nothing, perhaps they are two separate ways of reaching the same truth. Boom! What if science and spirituality are actually reaching the same place, but using different processes. QE, no, not QED. <laughs> Bam! That's, that's it, right? And yeah, that was my insight. Like, I don't, I don't really want to add anything to it now because like, that was the slam dunk of this. Is like, perhaps, like, it, it's just like, it, like, it, can you not agree with me that this has no fucking practical application whatsoever? But it's just like a very interesting thought to me. It's like the fact that like we have these two extremes in the form of 
um, you know, infinity and infinitesimally small or nothing, like true nothingness, right? And then you have like, or, or, um, log, or, or science and spirituality, right? Or masculine and feminine, right? And this thing and that thing, right? It's like, but perhaps they are just looking at something from opposite ends and ultimately reaching the same thing because, and that, and that one thing, you can call it oneness, you can call it nothingness, you can call it infinity. What is that thing? Past this, this world of cars and one plus one is two and 10 to the power of three is a thousand, right? Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> secondary school maths <laughs> um yeah you know um and, and like fucking like K kim kardashian i don't know why i thought of her name i don't really but but uh, you know or, or like anime and, and like ikea i'm outside ikea right now you know and men and women and like children and like queen and um you know evan cycles <laughs> Like, what the fuck am I even saying right now? We can go from a world like this, and we can go in either direction. We can go smaller, or we can go bigger, we can go more, we can go less, and we arrive at the same place. What does this mean? What the fuck does this mean? Could it mean that we human beings are the lead, are like the kind of, the, the wave edge of this physical, uh... Existence and this is another thought I had right. I was thinking how like okay, so like if if you're saying that infinity is and and uh, Nothingness are the same Right, and it's this weird thing where you would think that like there are they are infinitely a, uh, Apart so you're like you think of it in a, in a linear sense you're like one plus two infinity and then this and then like it's like two infinities man, you know or whatever right and it's like perhaps this is like, this is something like, you know, again, we, maybe it's like a loop. I imagine like maybe the universe curves in on itself. That's a theory that, that, that's kind of popular, right? Other people have talked about astrophysicists, you know, theoretical physicists, um, you know, maybe that's a thing. Um, you know, so, so so maybe like we we think like maybe we are ants on a sphere, thinking that we are that we are traveling from one end to the other end infinitely far, but all it is is what we're walking around the, the circumference of a sphere. Maybe that's what infinity is. There are so many theories, right? So I, and I don't want to delve into this too much. It's just an idea I had, right? For the century, but as I was saying, like, how much is too much? That's 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 the question. Because <laughs> we, we seem to know, like, okay, at the very least, right? We know what one is. One is probably the most comfortable number that we that we can imagine, right? Because one is just one. It's simple, right? But you know, but what is actually in that one? You know, and it's like ah, oh, it's so much, right? So like. If you if you can think of like this is another image that comes to my head it's like it's like it's like an it's like something like an ocean but it's more of like a digital ocean in that like you can see like you can see like the pixels within that uh, that, that ocean but sometimes those pixels grow to be like an amorphous blob and sometimes you see the ocean as something that is without pixels infinite resolution as they say so you see like this ocean is perfectly filled in with with material, right? But then sometimes, you know, plus XXX milliseconds, right? You see a part of it begin to, to, to break off. And you see like and then like a, a bit more time passes and then like those 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 big chunks turn into smaller chunks, right? And you can see like that each that there's a that there's there's a I can't describe this. The only way to describe this would be would be vis visually, like the best way to describe it. Like, if you can imagine, like, there's there's an ocean that's full, 
and there's an ocean that's full of pixels. And then, and then there's other times when some parts of it are four and some other parts of it is pixels, right? And it's this, 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 where, this thing where, like, any part of that ocean could break apart and, fract and fractalize at any point. And any part of the ocean could simultaneously, well, not simultaneously, but, like, it could, very, it could eas as easily come together and form a whole. That's, that's the picture that I have of, of the ocean, if you follow me. Maybe... <sighs> My animation skills aren't that great, but like it's just like a, it's it's this field, right? And it, and it's like it could be uniform at any one point, but it can also like fractalize in different places and and break into smaller and smaller kind of picks like, like pieces, you know, and and that goes and that goes in and those those pieces can become more or less infinitesimally small, right? But what about like what about in in this reality, right? And it's like they say that like human beings. Um, they say that human beings, like, can know up to about 150 people, right? Before, like, they start to kind of forget the names of people, and, like, or be before they can't store any more kind of people in their heads, right? Like, how, how tall can you build a tree? How tall can you build a tree before it collapses? How tall can you build any structure before it collapses, right? And, like, obviously there's the unit, you know, that there's, and, like, how... How big has does something have to be to be considered a unit? Because anything smaller than that, it, it, it breaks apart. It becomes dust. It becomes wind. So, like, you need a certain degree of size and mass for that thing to, to exist as an entity on, it, like, on its own. Right? So, like, as a right brain dumb, like, or, or rather as, I don't know what, what I am. I'm just a thinker. I enjoy, like, sometimes occasionally delving into this random... Like just just thinking about everything, it's like it's just like it's it's so and it's like, but like on another planet, maybe you could build a tree a hundred times taller, you know, maybe in another universe the very structure of a tree is unstable, or the very like the way that our you know that our matter forms entities and units is completely out of whack in another universe. Maybe it has different physical laws, right? What are those laws? They're, they're, the, they're the divisions of, of source, you know. They're things that are so high level or so close to source energy in terms of dimension that you can't sense them. You can only observe their effect, right? But their, their effect pervades matter. So could you say that matter and forces, like, they're different, they're different dimensions, right? Like, gravity is obviously from a much higher dimensional reality than matter is, right? But, like, but gravity pervades matter. In fact, it, it affects matter, right? And you could say vice versa, that matter affects, makes up. Because with no matter, there would be no forces in the universe, right? So what's going on? Just what the fuck is going on with this crazy world? I don't know. <laughs> but it's damn... It's damn interesting, is what I can say. So, like, you can focus. Ha <laughs> ha! You can focus right now, and I could focus right now, on how I have, I don't have enough money, or how I, I can't, I'm not skillful enough in music, or that, like, I'm horny, <laughs> or that I'm hungry, or that Donald Trump is the president and that depresses me. It, does, it really doesn't, I don't really care, to be honest. But, like... Or whatever thing is happening, or I'm studying for exams and I have to remember, like, that H, C, L, plus H, water, wait, hold on, I know this. H, C, L, which is, which is, um, hydrochloric acid, plus, plus potassium hydroxide, which is KOH, is water and potassium chloride, which is a salt. Yes, I remember chemistry. It's been so long. I took a degree in it, but I remember hardly anything <laughs> from my degree. Um, I remember the basic chemical reaction. Um, you know, and, and it's like... Um, wait, is that right? I think I fucked up. <laughs> There's no potassium in there. When the f... Ugh. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, no, there is. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. See? I'm a right-brain dominant person. I'm like potassium hydroxide 
no. And my brain's about to die. And then, like, my, my, my chemist friends are like, dude, are you serious? You know, potassium hydroxide, hydrogen chloride, or hydrochloric acid, water and, and potassium chloride. That's like fucking, like, I could, that's like, I could, I could, I could close my eyes and picture that. You know, I could go to sleep and dream about that. And I'm like, it's because you're a left brain scientist. I hate you. <laughs> but you get my point. It's like, we, we like are so fixated on shit that happens to us. Not, in, and it's not necessarily our own fault. It's just like the world and it was like, it forces you to think about, you know, like money and success and family and friends and all of these human, these human concerns, right? And yet I just spent almost an hour talking about random shit about like infinity and, and, and nothingness and, and, you know, and, and like, you know, left and all of this shit. Isn't reality fucking crazy? You know? Even, isn't reality fucking crazy? That like, there's so much out there. And you can think about things from so many different levels, on so many different dimensions. You can think from thing, you can think about things from your perspective, you can think, think about things from my perspective, you can think about things from Donald, things from Donald Trump's perspective. It's like, I'm not saying in the century, because after this, I'm going to go back to, like, practical stuff, right? I'm not saying for you to become, like, this weird, like, this weird, like, mad genius, like, my, like you know, that I could potentially become and, 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 like, end up, like, you know, end up, like, fucking, like, getting brain hemorrhaging from thinking too much, you know, in the next 10 years. I'm not saying that, but, like, I'm saying that, like, how's this for a bit of perspective? Is it, like, this, you can do this. You can go from worrying about your finances to then thinking about some sh thing that doesn't even apply to like real life. And it's all part of reality. You know, they are both two things out of fucking countless things that you could choose to focus your attention on and your consciousness and your thoughts. So like the next time you feel like, oh, I'm trapped thinking about this, you know, perhaps this is the, the crux, right? It's like, perhaps the next time that you, you're, you're like, oh, I'm stuck. Um, I'm stuck, like, you know, like, my finances and, yeah. Like, maybe you can think about this entry. Maybe you can think about, like, something else. And just realize that the world is such a fucking insanely big, but also, just like, ah, insanely big, but also insanely small, and it's just like everything, and it's just like, I give up. <laughs> I give up. I give up. I, this 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 channel. I give it up because this this there'll never be an end to like me uh, ever like documenting everything in life. Not even like like all of the the Earth's best scientists could ever like scratch the surface of what it means to be in existence. So I should just give up now. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. I live for this shit. This is so interesting to me. This is why I live. And, yeah, it's crazy. And, like, one of the things also is that you can view, funnily enough, you can, you can view the immensity and the, the seeming kind of pointlessness of life as something that's terrible. And I've been in those places, you know, where it's like, well, what's the fucking point then? You know, it's just the same thing over and over again, you know, and it's like, or, you can think of it as like, the world is so varied and crazy and, yeah. So cool. An hour long entry, that's what we like to see. <laughs> so cool. If you, if you, if you've watched as far as me, then like, damn. Like, that's crazy, you know. Again, this is just me rambling. I don't, like, you know, if you have... <laughs> It's just my thoughts, right? You know, I don't, I don't claim that any of what I just said is even remotely true. I don't claim that it's even remotely something that you should care about. You know, if anything, I am an idiot and you have the answers for yourself. Think of it that way, right? You know, but like, but if you have any, if you want to discuss anything or like if you have any ideas, then like feel free to leave them, you know, and maybe I'll check them out, you know. But, like, if you have watched through this entire entry, then, like, damn. 
thank you for that. Well, not even thank you, but like, isn't life crazy? You know, it's like it's not even like you know. Thank you for watching this video. It's like life's crazy, isn't it? You know, it's fucking insane. So cool. Anyway, I will leave you on that. Like, I hope that I didn't you know blow your brains too much and or waste your time. But like, yeah. <laughs> In the next episode, I promise that I'll talk about something a bit more down to earth. But like. Um, hopefully I'll also be out of the dark, but like, I, I'm get, I, I get this funny feeling that perhaps it may not be the case, but, um, yeah, until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching this, and I will catch you in the next Bojinjin vlog entry. Peace out, guys. Aye!